Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Emergency Auto Land in 7 Minutes on Runway 2. Das ist die große Neuerung bei der Cirrus SRG 7 Plus. Safe Return Emergency Auto Land. Das erste Mal war im Kolbenmotorflugzeug. Wenn der Pilot ausfällt, können die Passagiere einen Knopf drücken und das Flugzeug findet automatisch zum nächstgelegenen Flugplatz, steuert das Flugzeug, steuert die Leistung, bremst auf der Bahn und schaltet sogar den Motor aus. Ich bin Thomas Borchert vom Fliegermagazin und wir zeigen euch alle Details. Hallo Thomas und all of the readers of Flieger Magazine. Mein Name ist Ivy McIver. Ich bin der Executive Director of the SR Series Product Line at Series Aircraft. Und um, I am here in a experimental aircraft equipped with Safe Return. It's an SR22 and we are introducing Safe Return for the entire SR Series product line. I'm excited to show you the Safe Return on the SR Series. Series is the first um, it's the first aircraft company to put the emergency auto land system on a piston airplane. And, uh, you should get a really good idea of what the system is capable of and uh, how cool it is. So let's go. Okay, so we are up flying around. All right, I'm just, I'm hand flying. I'm going to let go of the controls. And I'm going to reach back and I'm going to hit the button. Safe return engages in its activation sequence. So basically, the entire flight deck turns into a very passenger-friendly series of screens, instructing the passengers on exactly what to do and showing a very simplified map, showing very simplified information. The Safe Return Emergency Auto Land System is now controlling your airplane. Remain calm and please avoid touching the flight controls, which may interfere with the Auto Land System. Your airplane will now navigate to and land at the safest nearby airport. Your destination airport is displayed on the bottom of the left-hand screen, and your estimated time until landing is displayed at the top of both screens. The system has already communicated to air traffic control personnel, who will continue tracking you. For the duration of your flight, You'll continue to hear automated broadcasts to air traffic control, updating them on your progress. And in the background, it starts doing emergency communications. So it squawks emergency. It broadcasts um, declaring an emergency on the emergency frequency. And it actually broadcasts to the nearest appropriate frequency as well. So that might be center, that might be a tower, that might be a nearby um, CTAF, it's basically broadcasting on two different frequencies, declaring an emergency and making everyone in the area aware that you're experiencing an emergency and that the aircraft is being flown by the safe return aircraft system. Aircraft November 832, Charlie, Bravo, pilot incapacitation, nine miles northeast of Kilo, Delta, Lima, Hotel, emergency auto land in six minutes on runway 27 of Kilo, Delta, Lima, Hotel. Okay, so it's going through its calculation. It's determined that Muscle Shoals is the closest airport. And it's alerting the passengers that we're going into a right turn. We're going to be descending for three minutes. We're approximately 27 miles from the airport. Sorry, approximately 15 miles from the airport. So it is a bit windy um, up at altitude today. So what you'll see is the airplane configuring for cruise speed. And you'll see that power lever move, the mixture move. And as we configure for landing, it will actually configure for about 95 knots. Now, it also assumes that your airplane has been contaminated. So it doesn't know um, exactly what kind of weather conditions you've flown through or what condition your airplane's in. So it takes the safest assumption and assumes that you've got ice on the airplane. If it's below five degrees C, it will engage the ice protection system. Um, so you'll see the TKS fluid coming out of the panels, um, but it does set up for a 50% flaps landing. So it's a half flaps landing. Um, and you'll come in for landing about 95 knots. Your airplane is now maneuvering onto its final approach. The emergency auto land system will continue to control your airplane down to a safe, controlled landing on the runway. Please ensure your seatbelt is securely fastened 
and that all loose items are stowed prior to landing. You'll arrive at your destination shortly. So now you'll see here, this is actually showing some rain. Um, I don't know what that, uh, the radar is picking up, but it will fly through green, so light rain, uh, but it will avoid heavier rain. So if you see like um, yellow or red on the radar, um, uh, it will avoid that. So it will avoid terrain, it will avoid weather, it will fly through like light rain. Um, it will uh, it will choose to fly around terrain rather than climb over terrain if that's appropriate. It basically has a pretty complex algorithm of things that it waits, um, things like how far the airport is away, what the train is in the way, um, what the airspace is, um, what the weather looks like, and it takes the most appropriate route to the most appropriate airport. So now, we've maneuvered onto the final approach and it's configuring for landing. So you've seen the, the power lever comes back, the flaps have been deployed to 50%, and it's configuring to fly 95 knots. Once we um, configure for landing, come down for landing, flare, and touch down, the sequence is such that the airplane starts to roll out, the flaps retract, the auto braking starts to engage, and once we're five knots or less or almost stopped, the mixture is going to start to come all the way back and the fuel pump shuts off so that the engine will actually shut down and stop. So the safe return system will not go around. Um, it assumes that the runway has been clear uh, uh, based on the emergency communications or if the tower, if the field is towered, uh, the tower would have cleared the runway. We basically declared an emergency and declared that we're landing on runway 30. So we're just coming up over the threshold. You'll see that power start to come back. We're aligned with the uh, with the center line. And we're just configuring for that flare. All right, so there's the landing. We'll start to roll out. Flaps are coming up. Brakes are being engaged. We've reacquired the center line. The boost pump shuts off. The switch is still on, but the boost pump is actually shut off. We've now come to a complete stop and the mixture starts to come back. Attention Kilo, Delta, Lima, Hotel, Traffic, Aircraft, November 832, Charlie, Bravo, disabled on runway 27. All right, engine shutdown is complete, and you'll get instructions on how to actually and exit the propeller. Airplane. Propeller to come to a complete stop before exiting. To exit, lift the handle on either of the two cabin door armrests and push the door out. And that's it. That completes our demonstration of the safe return system to a complete full stop landing. So thank you for showing us how to auto land in a Cirrus SR series. Yeah, um, my pleasure. Right, there must be a lot of, you know, little motors and, and stuff apart from the software part um, that, yes. that's involved in that. Um, how much does all of that weigh? So if you kind of look at the different pieces, there's some uh, mechanical pieces that work in conjunction with the software and all together it weighs about 10 pounds. Then of course there's a price to all of this. How much does it cost? Sure, so on the 22 it's 70,000 more. On the 22T, it's 75,000 more, and on the 20, it's 40,000 more. Right. And remember, that's for G7 and all the things that are coming with G7, not just for safe return. So G7 so also. G7 plus. G7, yeah. The, right, yeah. So, yes, G7. So that's plus. a little plus sign that you introduced with the jet, right? Uh, a, the jet is at G2 the G2 plus, plus, plus right? Yeah. Yes. Yep, so we're introducing the G7 plus. Um, and that price increase is for everything in the G7 Plus. So and that is in addition um, to Safe Return? Correct. So Safe Return, definitely the star of the show. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also got a normal use radar altimeter. So you'll see the radar altimeter mm -hmm. readout on the PFD. We have smart pitot heat, 
um, which automatically turns on the pitot heat when it's below five degrees C, so there's no pitot heat switch anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then automatic database uploads as well, so right. you won't have to take your SD card out of the uh, flight deck to go and update your databases. It will just update wirelessly over the air through mm -hmm. the GDL60. Right. Uh, and then we also are introducing runway occupancy awareness. So the runway, you'll get basically an alert if you're approaching a runway that's occupied, either someone's approaching to land or they're rolling down the runway or they've, they've entered the runway and they're sitting on the runway um, to minimize any sort of runway incursions. Right. Now we saw in the video that you made uh, how the airplane on the ground reacquired the runway center line. You've mentioned that. Is that done through GPS positioning or or is there a camera that visually acquires the center line? Yeah, it's actually done through GPS. Yep, so there's GPS, no cameras right. or anything. So that brings us to what other kind of what what airfields would the system pick for an uh, for a safe return for an automatic landing? Yeah, great question. So it actually goes through quite a complicated algorithm to determine the most appropriate airport. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks at things like the condition of the airplane. Um, you know how much fuel you've got on board, and then it looks for a runway that's a hard surface. Um, that has a GPS approach with vertical guidance right. that's 75 feet wide and at least 4,500 feet long. So it won't fly an ILS, it will want to have that GPS approach. That's right, yep. And no VFR fields. Uh, right, yep, right. it has to have an So in the video, we see the uh, throttle and the mixture mm -hmm. move automatically. We s obviously, the brakes have to be activated automatically. You know, that brings on all kinds of ideas what one could do with that, right? I mean, will that, is there auto throttle coming to the series? Yeah, so uh, that, is, series? that is a great question, right? And I think someday there will be a world where we walk up to the plane and we get in and say, fly me to my destination. And it just does everything. Well, and that might we, take out the fun well, of it. When, when you get there, there right, <laughs> yes. Um, but it might take the fun out of it for people like you and I, but mm -hmm. it might make aviation a lot more approachable mm -hmm. to people yeah. who right. don't like to do what we do. Right. Um, right. But they like to live the benefits of mm -hmm. something like this year's life. Of course, that's a long way away, but yeah. this as an emergency use system, I think will make the sky safer. I think it'll make the, the plane a lot more approachable because if we think about getting into aviation and, and learning to become a pilot, you know, if you look at the airframes that Safe Return Emergency Auto Land is on now, those, the people flying those have a lot of experience, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Vision Jet, um, you have to have a type rating, you have to have a recurrent every year. Um, flying an SR, it could be anyone from that level of experience right on down to a brand new student pilot right. um, and everything in between. But the u main use scenario would be the pilot being incapacitated in some way. And yes. then that would add a lot of kind of, you know, uh, I mean, it would, peace of mind for, for the people flying with you, right? Absolutely. That if something happens, yeah, it eases now a lot of it would be, I'll show you how to pull the parachute, which is kind of a more violent solution to the problem. I wouldn't say more violent, but definitely well, more dramatic. <laughs> more dramatic. Let's, that's a better word, yes. Um, whereas if you press that button and the airplane lands itself, yeah. but it could be flying around for two hours or something. It could be. It reaches, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but, you know, I think what we're giving passengers back is a sense of control. Right. Um, is that something that comes up in sales discussions often Every with day. spouses? Every that, day. That they and it's not just spouses, it's it's family, it's business partners. Mm -hmm. So what we're kind of doing is is um, allowing people to rocks a little bit and giving them back a sense of control. Like, hey, it's okay that you don't know how to land the plane or how to take the planes off, pen and off or what everything on here means. Mm -hmm. Because if you had to, you could just push a button and, right. and land the plane yourself without having to know what yeah. all this does. Since there are so many more, you know, piston SRs around than jets and turboprops, we're, we're sure to see an activation sooner or later, right? I mean, there hasn't been one yet, I believe. Mean, yeah, yeah, there hasn't system. been there hasn't been an activation of emergency auto land yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we are likely to see the first activation in an SR series just by law of numbers. Right. Yeah. Well, we're going to be watching that, and I hope we get to fly it together soon. Uh, I hope so, too. I'm sad that we didn't get to fly it together, but hopefully uh, the video gave you a, a good idea of what happened. It did, indeed. Thank you yep. very much, Ivy. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you.